to the Prophecy Club. I did a one-hour interview with Jerry Corsi, and this is the continuation of that interview on the topic, Who Really Killed President Kennedy? In progress. That we would have not had all the student protests, all the draft, all the radicalization of our universities. Kennedy had also realized that the CIA was blocking him from direct discussions with the Russians. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy found out he could communicate directly with Khrushchev and make things happen. So Kennedy continued doing that and and negotiated the Test Ban Treaty, which also the New World Order crowd hated. They wanted nuclear weapons. They wanted a, a Cold War. Okay, what about Russia? Russia is not stupid. They know... What really happened in 9-11, they know what really happened in Iraq and Afghanistan and now Libya and Egypt and now Syria. Do you think that the Russian bear is getting just plenty mad at America? Well, uh, yes, I do. I, you know, Russia had a very complex role, and I discuss it in the book, you know, who really killed Kennedy is at length, because Russia thought they had a defector in Oswald, and they trained Oswald to be an assassin. You know, there was a whole period of time where the Russians wanted the Cold War continued, too. It was serving a benefit in Russia economically. And when Jack Kennedy's coming along and wanting to put an end to this, I believe, as I said, there was a CIA file started for Lee Harvey Oswald in 1960. It was maintained by James Angleton. Angleton managed the CIA the false defector program, where we recruited Marines as double agent soldiers we recruited to go defect to the Soviet Union so we could penetrate the CIA. I think Oswald was trained by the KGB, and he was given a mission to be an assassin, but I don't think Oswald followed through with it. Oswald reported it back. Oswald was helped back into the United States by the U.S. government, including giving him a loan to get him back here with his wife. And I believe Oswald was always loyal to the United States, and was an agent of the CIA as well as the FBI until the day he died. Okay, to summarize, we're talking about military-industrial complex, CIA, Fed Reserve, international bankers, people in high places with positions to tell people to open doors, close doors, stand down, do this, do that, that killed JFK, and for the reason to really build their new world order, put money in their pocket, to do away with... The United States as we know it, really. Right. And, and I want to talk about the mob for a minute. See, the, the story of the mob that nobody knows, and you know, that's why the Elkins family is so important. In the 50s, 1957, the Elkins family controlled the Western mobs. They controlled them all the way from Portland, Oregon, through Phoenix. They had been opening Reno and uh, Las Vegas as casino towns. The center of the power was up in Portland, Oregon. And the Eastern mobs were moving in on the West through the Teamsters. The Teamsters were headquartered by Dave Beck, who was in Seattle at this time. Kennedys and the Elkins made a pact. And they made a pact because the Elkins were Protestant, and Joe Kennedy, uh, you know, Catholic but Irish, had been rejected by the Eastern mobs. During Prohibition, the Italians and the Jews, Meyer Lansky crowd, the Capone crowd, they didn't accept Joe Kennedy. They didn't want him in their club. And Joe Kennedy always resented out of that. So when the Western mob said to the Kennedys, we've got the goods, we wiretapped all the, the Eastern mob moving into the Teamsters, the Kennedys bought in and they held the McClellan Committee hearings. And they went after Hoffa with a vengeance. Then when Bobby Kennedy got appointed Attorney General, Joe Kennedy would not let go of the vengeance match. And he wanted Bobby to prosecute more of the Eastern mob. Now, Sam Giancana in Chicago felt like he had basically delivered the election to Jack Kennedy with the votes in Cook County that were stolen in the 1960 election. And the mob did not take kindly to Joe Kennedy's vengeance on them. Uh, Jack Kennedy was soft on the mob. It was Bobby and his and the father that were the bulldogs. Jack Kennedy was sharing mistresses with Sam G. and Connor in these days, buddying with them all out in Reno and Tahoe, and with Frank Sinatra and the Giancana crowd. I mean, they were all, Jack Kennedy was not the hard edge that Bobby Kennedy was. But with Bobby prosecuting the mob, the mob eventually got tired of it. 
and they turned, and the mob was working with the CIA. Bobby had even put the mob and the CIA together to try to kill Castro. The mob and the CIA had worked together since the first day, since the OSS, when they let Lucky Luciano out of prison in World War II, with Lucky Luciano agreeing to help the OSS turn the mafia in Sicily in favor of us, the Allies, so when we invaded Sicily, Patton had an easier time. The mob and the, and the CIA have been working in the drug business, and we're importing drugs even from Southeast Asia. In 1963, from Vietnam through Marseille, it was the French connections. And that's been going on still today. You've got to ask yourself why we've got more heroin coming out of Afghanistan right now than we did when the Taliban ran it. And I suggest the answer you're going to find is going to have a lot to do with the CIA. Yep, the I, CIA runs I drugs. Yep, yep, that's their primary job. All right, now, uh, switch gears here. Are you aware of Stanislav Lunev that back, uh, you remember, oh, I guess it was 1995, 6, 7, somewhere in there, the Russians announced that they had lost 50 suitcase nuclear bombs. Yes. Stanislav Lunev comes out and, matter of fact, he spoke for us, wrote a book, and he said that the lion's share, the most of those 50 suitcase nukes, had been smuggled into the United States. Are you aware of that, and can, do you know that they have been? Um, you know, we've talked about that at length. I've known about that. I've never devoted time enough to research it to validate it one way or the other. I'm aware of the whole issue, but I can't tell you. I mean, everything I'm talking about with the Kennedys, I've been researching for 50 years. I've 700 footnotes. Yes, I know. And by the way, everybody's got to get this book, which uh, I'm going to ask you to tell you about. Just I've got one, one more question. Are you aware of a plot where if we hit Syria, a series of these suitcase nuclear bombs would be exploded in America? It wouldn't surprise me. I think if we go to war with Syria, the consequences on the United States are going to be horrendous. Going to war in Syria makes absolutely no sense. Why Obama wants us to support al-Qaeda, why he supported the Muslim Brotherhood, which Egypt is in the process of outlawing right now, and why Obama's had his brother Malik running money for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and supporting money being run for the terrorists in North Sudan. You know, the, Obama is doing the bidding of the Saudis. The Saudis own Obama. That's my conclusion. And the Saudis well, want to Well, he bowed down to that fod, that king bowed down to the Saudis. His boss. What is that? Okay, I understand that Obama right. also wears a ring that says, No God but Allah. Well, in fact, I did a lot of research on that. And they is that I accurate? Think, altered the ring. I believe it is. I think they altered the ring in order to make obscure the original saying. But I noticed that ring because Obama's worn that ring since he was in college, and he's never explained where it came from. But he's worn it on his wedding ring finger. And it, it is, and he used it for his his wedding with Michelle. But he's never explained the ring or where it comes from or what it says or what it's about. And he never let close up pictures be taken. Were there enough close up pictures where you could get, you could see what was on it, and it had the shahada on it, which is you know there's no God but Allah. I'm convinced of it. Okay, do you know about a plot for the international bankers to blow up a computer, a bank? that would destroy their records to put billions of dollars into the hands of the international bankers? Well, you know, the international bankers, I, they, I don't know if they have to even go that far. The international bankers, uh, I think the next thing that will happen is the implosion of the derivatives and the another financial collapse, because I think where the international bankers are is they want to move us toward an IMF one-world currency, uh, I'm even curious to see our $100 bills being printed looking more like euros. We're being very gradually prepared for a new form of currency. And, you know, with the debt structure we've got and the all-fiat debt, the only way to handle all this is going to be to essentially smash what exists and go into a new structure of money. Yeah, that's the phoenix. And we, that'll we... be, you know, that'll be done through the... International Monetary Fund and Special Drawing Rights, and we'll have a world currency. I've written about that extensively, Stan, and I could, you know, if you look at my book, America for Sale, I document all the planning that's been done on a one-world, new-world currency. It's, it's in the works. So how close are we to a one-world government? 
Well, it's one of the reasons I chose to decide to write this book now, to try to get people to understand how the Kennedy assassination was a pivotal event, a necessary event, because Kennedy was going to destroy the foundations of this new world order. Kennedy was going to destroy the Federal Reserve, their money. He was going to destroy the CIA, their intelligence, their secrets, their Gestapo. And he was going to confront the military-industrial complex and say, I don't think we need all these tanks, airplanes, missiles, everything else built on lying wars that are not in the national interest. Kennedy was not going to fight and he didn't fight in, in Cuba, he didn't fight in Laos, he wasn't going to fight in Vietnam. I don't think you'd have seen Kennedy get all that excited when Kuwait was taken over. And I don't think we'd have ever invaded Iraq after the 9-11. Because, you know, I still can't figure out what we were doing in Iraq. Okay, so then what's Obama doing? If we could really look into his heart and see his plans, what's he wanting to do? Where's he's, he going? He's the next nominee... You know, he's doing the job of, the, again, the New World Order. The president is just a nominee. He's helping the financial collapse come about. We'll be right back after this message. In the Rob Skiba gift offer, his first DVD is Mythology, UFOs, and the Coming Great Deception. Topics are Sumerian, Egyptian, and Greek pantheons, the Coming Great Deception, UFOs and aliens, interdimensional portals, transhumanism, and the quest to be like gods, giants and hybrids, and in Babylon Rising, the topics are the signs in the heavens, Babylon in the last days, New World Order conspiracies, secret societies, and the occult's obsession with the numbers 322, tetrads, or blood red moons, in the eclipses in the days ahead, the feasts of God and how they relate to the last days, the tribulation survival plan, and 2045, the year man becomes immortal, topics will be Genesis 6, Nephilim, Hybrid Humans, War with Hybrids, Hybrids Among Us, The Injection of Immortality, all three DVDs valued at $90, available for a gift of just $50 at prophecyclub.com. In Doug Hamp's new DVD, The Injection of the Beast, in the last days, it will be as in the days of Noah. Angels were mixing their seed with humanity, and it's happening again. That's demons and humans having sexual relations, masquerading as aliens, or actually creating Nephilim hybrids for the body of the Antichrist. Then in The Fall, Feast, and Prophecy, he tells the story of how Jesus fulfilled the first four feasts at his first coming and how he will fulfill the next three in return on some future Rosh Hashanah. The Day of Atonement pictures the opening of the books and the judgment of those dead and alive. The Feast of Tabernacles pictures us receiving our mansions. Both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of just $40 or more in the HAMP gift offer. Remember, the Prophecy Club continues because of your prayers and gifts of support, not the distribution of DVDs. And now, back to the program. You know, he's doing the job of, the, again, the New World Order. The president is just a nominee. He's helping the financial collapse come about, you know, pushing forward the day in which the, death of the final dollar. financial crisis, the death of the dollar. Right. He's advancing the interests of the Saudis in oil. And so, that, again, that's a fundamental pillar of a new world order. And he is weakening the U.S. as a whole so that when we get slid into a new world order structure, Germany is the dominant power, not us. Okay, so we know the who, and we're starting to understand the why uh, of Kennedy. Right. What else do we need to know? What's the real nugget we need to know to really put this picture together? Well, I mean, once you begin to get down to, you know, who the assassins were, you realize that there's some very, very big clues. Uh, there was an international assassin for the, uh, for the drug cartels, a guy from Corsica off of Italy, who was picked up in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963, by U.S. authorities and within a day or two released by the INS, Immigration Naturalization Service, and not investigated, which was a crime. The, the memo slipped out of the CIA, and we were, we were found it in the National Archives, and it's clear that this guy, an international assassin named Mertz, was there. I built a very good case in the book 
for Roscoe White being one of the assassins. There's this very bizarre case of Rose Shara Marie, who is a woman who is dumped out of a car in a highway over in Oklahoma, I believe it was, or Louisiana. And the people in the car are on their way to be assassins. And one of them, a guy named Arcadia Smith, is a well-known assassin. He was part of the Bay of Pigs crowd and the Watergate crowd. And she dumped out of the car, predicted, told people that these guys were going to kill Kennedy. They thought she was nuts. Very well documented. She was right on. She told them exactly what was going to happen. And when Oswald was killed, she explained that was the Patsy being killed by the mob. And that documents, I think, Arcadia Smith as being one of the shooters. You have Johnny Roselli, who was the operational guy. See, you, when you get to Lyndon Johnson and Dulles, these are not operational guys. The operational guys are the guys who go back to Guatemala in the 1950s where the CIA developed this model. Back with Eisenhower, we destabilized Guatemala on behalf of a banana company, the United Fruit Company. And E. Howard Hunt trained there the bogus army that supposedly invaded Guatemala, just like he did in Cuba, another CIA army. And eventually we killed the head of state. And the Patsy there said, well, the guy who killed him was palace guard and as soon as he killed the president, of course, nobody saw him kill the president. He did it at the palace halls. And then he turned the gun on himself and killed himself. Well, that's all nonsense. That's the Patsy model. And E. Howard Hunt was an operational guy who, at his deathbed, said he played a role, bench warmer, in the Kennedy assassination. Johnny Roselli, another fix-it guy, who Johnny Roselli went back with the Kennedys to the... You know, right around the World War II period, Roselli was from the Chicago mob. Roselli helped Joe Kennedy annul one of Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy had this tendency before he married uh, Jacqueline. He had he'd go off and he'd marry women. He must have married three or four of them. His father was always coming behind him and annulling these marriages. It was little known about Jack, and Johnny Roselli turned on Jack, but was an operational guy. And I'm sure he helped to assemble the team. And the players repeat and repeat. The same guys who showed up, Frank Sturgis and the other, and the Bay of Pigs were also involved in Watergate. And then I think show up again in the Kennedy assassination. So I'm able in this book to do a pretty good job of listing who the likely shooters really were. Okay, tell us about your book. What's it called and how do we get it? A book is Who Really Killed Kennedy? Of course, I'm Jerome Corsi, my last name is C-O-R-S-I, and the book has been doing extremely well. It's in the uh, bookstores everywhere now, and it's also available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com, and also on the WND, World Net Daily, where I'm a senior staff reporter to the WND Superstore. Okay. To summarize, the WHO is a group of CIA, Federal Reserve, mob, military-industrial complex, President Johnson, Dulles, and it had to do with essentially uh, ruining their plans to move America towards a new world order to destroy America to set up a, an international one-world government. At yeah, the- and the shocking thing is that, you know, Nixon was there in Dallas as well, lied about being in Dallas, went back and started immediately planning in New York in his office with the top advisors as to now that Kennedy was dead, how he was going to run for office. George H.W. Bush was in Dallas that day, lied about it, said he was somewhere in Texas the day of the assassination. Nobody was somewhere. Everybody knew where they were and it was the day Jack Kennedy died. And again, George H.W. Bush, with memos from being in Dallas, November 22, 1963, tied to the CIA, we had three future presidents in Dallas the day Jack Kennedy died. Lyndon Johnson, who, of course, benefited, did not get taken off the ticket. And then you had the, the benefit coming to Richard Nixon, who positioned himself to run again now that Jack Kennedy was dead. And George H.W. Bush ends up head of the CIA and then advances himself to uh, the Ronald Reagan ticket and himself becomes president as soon as Reagan's out of office. Well, you seem to know a lot about a lot of things. What's really going on in Congress right now with the shutdown showdown <laughs> and all of this well, Obamacare? Uh, part of the problem with Congress right now, it's 
it does come out of my book, and I talk about it, is that the Republicans have become like identical with the de- Democrats by and large. It's hard to tell the two parties apart anymore. These big establishment Republicans. And I wrote a book, What Went Wrong, about, you know, I traveled with Romney for three weeks on his campaign plane, and I wrote a book about the election, What Went Wrong, and I point out these establishment Republicans are so Me Too Democrat, like Romney, you know, Obamacare, Romney, Romney Care, what's the difference? They don't excite the Republican base. And I think what's going on right now is that you've got people like Ted Cruz and Rand Paul who are really in touch with the Tea Party core of the Republican Party. And the excessive spending that we're doing, the spending ourselves into bankruptcy, which seems to be Obama's plan, and then, you know, this this Obamacare, which is like a cloward pivot to sociologists who said the way to move to communism was to overload the welfare system with requests. Well, I, I emailed a buddy of mine the other day, and I said, well, what the Republicans really need to do is to continue to just stand fast, shut the government down, but when they say, we'll get it going again, <laughs> the list of requests to get the government going again needs to be long. Bible in the schools, we're going to do away with homosexual marriages and things. In other words, really make it a shutdown or clean up. One well, of the, the, the Republican Party does not have that courage or moral resolve. Right. Well, the Republican it does. establishment is wanting a me to go along with the Democrats. They don't want to be anybody say anything bad about them. They don't want to be called racist. They don't want to be confrontational, and that's why people don't vote for them. Okay, uh, another question: What's the truth behind nine eleven and the OKC bombing? Well, again, that's going to be a whole other subject. I don't want to get into that one. <laughs> okay, well, another program, brother. Maybe you, you another one. Do some that. More I've, programs with yeah, it. I, I've nine uh, eleven is just a whole other subject, and I've kind of largely stayed out of it because I've got other things that are more important to me to pursue. This Kennedy thing, it turns out to have been one of the real purposes of my life. I've been around it since I was, you know, fifteen, sixteen years old. Well, it's and so very important to recurring. understand it. And it keeps recurring. So many of the people involved I've known, I've met, I've been around, I've spent time with, I've sought out, I've studied it so much, I've read so much on it, I have a huge collection of books. I've been you know, in the National Archives searching it out, I've been at the Kennedy Library searching it out. I mean, it, I've devoted a large portion of my life to the JFK assassination. I've just never written about it much until... Joseph Ferris said, you better write this book now before you die. Nobody knows about it. And so Farah really encouraged me to put this all down. That's where the book, Who Really Killed Kennedy, Joseph Farah was the guy who encouraged me to write it. It's just becoming a phenomenon. I mean, the word of mouth on the book, people reading it, they can't put it down. And take a look on it at Amazon and the other comments on it. This is one of those books that... I think goes so deeply into explaining the Kennedy assassination and putting the pieces together. To well, there's the been a lot order. of books about Kennedy's assassination. How is your book different than the other ones? Well, it's got much more information and much more of the truth, much more research, and it ties it to today. I show you how what we are today, the New World Order comes out of the assassination. Now, the New World Order crowd won the day they killed Kennedy. I'm trying to expose this back to Kennedy, who would have stopped it all had he lived. And if he had the authority to, but I'm sure there have been a lot of people fine. Well, right, so that's where he got killed, isn't it? Because he tried and was, was positioning to do it, and the fear on the part of the power people of the New World Order was that he might succeed, and he couldn't take that risk. So the 9-11 could have been stopped at the Kennedy assassination. Okay, see, and the Rob Skiba gift offer, his Many first DVD is mythology, Obama, UFOs, and the coming great deception. Topics are Kennedy, Sumerian, well, Egyptian, Kennedy and Greek pantheon, the coming great deception, UFOs and aliens, guy. interdimensional portals, transhumanism, and the quest to be like gods, giants, and hybrids, and in Babylon Rising, the topics are the signs in the heavens, Babylon in the last days, New World Order conspiracy, secret societies, and the occult obsession with the numbers 322, Tetrads, or 
blood red moons and the eclipses in the days ahead, the feasts of God and how they relate to the last days, the tribulation survival plan, and 2045, the year man becomes immortal. Topics will be Genesis 6 and nothing, or hybrid humans, war with hybrids, hybrids of the injection of immortality, all three DVDs valued at $90, available for a gift of just $50 at prophecyclub.com. Fletcher Prouty wrote some very good books. I just had the perspective of a life experience where I had known enough of these people and have been able to put it together, the Kennedy assassination. So the question of who really killed Kennedy is not just the, the, the people who pulled the trigger. It's a much bigger book. It's, you know, who put those people in the field? They're really the people who killed Kennedy, and I take it back to the Nazis. And I tie the associations into, you know, George H.W. Bush, tie the Bushes and the Dulleses together. And for many people, this is just startling information. But when you see the documentation for it, you can't deny it. Well, brother, your book is on the way, and I cannot wait to get it and to thoroughly read it, because I think that this book ties a whole lot of things together for people that want to understand Bible prophecy. Dad, I agree with you entirely. If there's one book to read and understand that'll help you to better understand Bible prophecy outside the Bible, it's got to be this book. Well, I, I wrote Who Really Killed Kennedy to be the kind of book you can't put down. It opens your mind to see connections with this New World Order crowd. Wow. To understand fundamentally what's going on in our politics today. Well, I'll say this, brother. Very few people have the grip on understanding where we're really going like you do. Very few understand we're really heading to a new world order, a world government in which the Antichrist sits on the throne of God. They don't understand that, and you get it. I get it. I'm trying to prevent it. Well, good for you. Blessings your way. Blessings your way. Thank you for coming on, and we want to have you back again. Thank you. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too. I'm happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just love this Jerry Corsi, and I just love the information he comes up with. I really believe he's one of the most informed people if you want to know the truth, and I want to know the truth about this Kennedy assassination. And there has been so much fluff and buff through the years. It is finally good to talk to someone that has really got to the bottom of it, and I really believe it. Now, I really encourage you to get this book, Who Killed Kennedy? by Jerry Corsi. However, the Prophecy Club is not going to carry this book. And basically, by the time we get them in, a couple of bucks we make in and out the order is just not worth it. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to give a donation to Prophecy Club. If you like this and other DVDs that we do, we don't really make our ministry roll by offering DVDs or books or anything else. At the end of the day, what really supports it is the Spirit of God nudging your heart, (laughs) not other ones, your heart to support the ministry. So if we have been a blessing, if this broadcast and other broadcasts have been a blessing, I'm going to ask and I'm going to pray a blessing. Here we go. Father, I ask that you would make the people that continually support this ministry the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Bless them when they come in. Bless them when they go out. Be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. Cause them to mount up with wings as eagles and to run and not grow weary and to walk and not faint. Father, be that voice that speaks behind them to say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, cause them to fear no evil because you are with them and that they will have their head anointed with oil and their cup would run over, and they would live all the days of eternity in your house. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers, and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. There are 30 scriptures in the Bible which say in the last days, massive amounts of oil will be discovered in Israel, and we believe we've been given the directive to use this prophesied oil and gas to fund worldwide soul winning. If you have questions about our vision, call 877-OIL-ISRAEL or 877-645-4772.